How's it going everybody? My name is Eric and in this video I'm going to walk you through step by step how to install your FreeX Wi-Fi thermal label printer. This printer, we're going to install it on a Mac and we're going to install it on a PC using USB and then we're gonna install it for Wi-Fi printing. It is a wireless Wi-Fi printer, but unfortunately right now, it does not work with iPhone or with Android. It's just with Mac and PC. If there's an update in the future where we can print from iPhones or Android, I'll come out with a video and show you guys how to do that. There is an index in the description, so you can skip to what part of the video you need to watch, if it's Mac or PC. I do encourage you to watch the initial setup and then skip to whatever you're installing it on. And then we're gonna first install it on a USB on each computer and then we're gonna install it via Wi-Fi. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you haven't already, please give the video a thumbs up. If you aren't already subscribed to the channel, consider subscribing and let's get into this tutorial. Before we install this on the computer, we're gonna have to get the printer set up. That's what we're gonna do now. Grab your power supply, your power cord, put them together, put this side into the wall, and then take this side, and you're going to turn the printer over, and they only go in one way. There's a little arrow on here, and that's just pointing up, and you just press it in like that. Then you're gonna take the USB cord that came with the printer, you're gonna take this end right here, turn the printer back over, and plug it in like that. Now we're gonna load labels. You can do that one of two ways. You can suspend them behind the printer, and bring them in the back right here. You would do that if you were using one of these and a big roll of labels. But the great thing about this printer is because this is such a big compartment here, volume here is actually pretty big to where I can just put this entire roll as you're going to see. In order to open the printer, you pull these two levers right here and just lift up like that. Now you see this roll holder it's locked as it is right now. The locked position is for if you're gonna be suspending the labels behind the printer, going through that hole, and then through the printer like that. However, I'm not a fan of having this entire big contraption, so we're just going to install the labels directly into the printer, and the way you do that, there's a little locking mechanism down here that you have to pull towards you, and that activates this spring roll holder right here. Then you're gonna grab your roll, make sure that the print side is facing up because that's what needs to make contact with the print head in order for it to print. So we're going to open that, drop our labels in, just kind of let it close and then thread it through these label guides. You can adjust these as needed. You don't want it to be too tight to where it's constricting the label, but you don't want it to be too loose either. You want it to just be tight enough to guide it to keep everything in line as it prints. Pull your roll all the way to your platen roller and just close the top of your printer. Now you're going to reach into the back, flip the switch from the circle to the line, and it should spit out one label. You press the feed button, It'll feed one blank label. If you ever want to change the label size, you just open it back up, remove the labels you have installed, insert the roll that you want, make sure that the label printing side is facing the label print head like that, close those in or widen them out, pull the labels all the way to the platen roller and then press it down. And then the printer auto recognized the size of the labels. As you can see, it presses feed one and it feeds one label every single time. However, we're gonna be using four by six rolls. So I'll put those back in. And now we're going to install this on a Mac. Now we're gonna set up your FreeX Wi-Fi thermal printer on a Macintosh computer. This is a newer Mac, so we're gonna to have to use a conversion dongle from USB to USB-C, something like this. If you don't have one of these, I will put a link in the description. You're gonna to need to get one. Or if you have an older Mac that has a regular USB port, you can just take that and plug it in. First, we're going to install it via USB, and then I'm gonna show you guys how to set it up via Wi-Fi, but I do encourage you just to install it via USB first because it is easier. Once you plug it into your computer, I will see you guys on the computer. Okay, so you're gonna have to open up a browser or click the link in the description that says Mac driver here, and it should bring you to this page. For Mac OS, we're going to download the FreeX software by clicking here. It's gonna bring you to this Google Drive. You're just going to go here to this Mac software 
two finger click and you can go to download. It should go to your downloads folder or pop up on your browser. I'm just gonna click it right there or navigate to your downloads folder. And if it brings you to this zip file, you should double click that and it should open a folder that says Mac OS FreeX driver. Mine's right here. And then you're going to open up this FreeX driver version 1.2.pkg and double click on that. It says it's Apple cannot check it for malicious software because it's not from the App Store. Apple likes to control things. So you, you might have to go into system preferences, security and privacy, click on this little lock, type in your password, and then go to App Store and identified developers. Now it should let us do it. There we go, we have the software open. We're going to hit continue, continue, install, and then it's asking for my password. I'm gonna use my fingerprint and installation was successful. Now we're gonna hit close. We can move that to the trash and then we're gonna go back to system preferences, go to printers and scanners, hit the plus button right here and you should have free X Wi-Fi thermal printer and it's via USB. And then where it says use, you're going to go to select software. And in this bar, you're going to type in free and then free X Wi-Fi thermal printer should pop up, hit okay. So I actually forgot to mention this while I was recording. So this is being added post-production. I highly recommend that you go here to where you name the printer and name it USB FreeX or something like that because calling it FreeX Wi-Fi might get confused if you're gonna be installing it with Wi-Fi and then you wouldn't know which one to pick when you're printing and I feel like it would just, it would save you a little bit of trouble. So just name it USB FreeX right here and then you hit add. The printer is now installed. You're gonna need a sample label to play with. So I recommend going over to fulfilledmerchant.com, link to it in the description, get to this page, hit download, pull up this sample label in your browser, go to print. Our printer's not picked right now. You're gonna hit this drop down, pick FreeX thermal printer. If you don't see it, you're gonna go to see more and then pick FreeX. You're gonna wanna make sure your paper size is four by six or 100 millimeters by 150. Those are the same dimensions. Or whatever other size you're printing, you're gonna wanna pick that depending on if you're printing different size labels. We're doing four by six, so 100 by 150 millimeters will work perfectly fine. Everything looks good. We're gonna hit print. It's gonna send the signal to the printer, prints it out. There we go. There is our label, no ink, no toner, beautiful thermal label. You can peel, stick on your package, and send it in the mail, except for not with this label because it's not a real one. So that's how you set it up with just USB. Now we're gonna set it up with Wi-Fi, which is a little bit tricky, but I think with this tutorial, it's gonna help a lot and you should have no problem setting it up. So you remember that folder we opened up earlier that had that PKG in it? Well, you're just going to go to this other file. It's a FreeX Wi-Fi program and you're going to open that. So we're gonna open up this FreeX Wi-Fi toolbox. We just double clicked on it. It's gonna ask if we wanna open it. It's from the internet, not from the app store. Apple likes to not let you open up stuff that's from the internet and only from the app store. So we're gonna hit open and then it's right here. It's communicating with the printer via USB. You need to have the printer plugged into the computer because we're gonna be programming the printer. If we unplug the printer, the printer goes away. So you need to make sure the printer's plugged in before you open this program up. So you're gonna click on your printer. You're gonna hit free X setup right there. And on this Wi-Fi toolbar, you're going to type in the name of your wireless network. You have to get this in perfectly, otherwise it's not going to work. The way to know the name of your wireless network is to go up here to your Wi-Fi. And as you can see, we have two, eight foot ceilings, 5G, and eight foot ceilings. I have a dual band router, and for some reason, I can only get the printer to work when I connect it to this band, not my 5G band, but just my other two, I think it's 2.4 gigahertz band. You have a dual band router, use the non 5G username and password. If you have one network name, then just use that one network. If you have two, use the one that's the non 5G band. As you can see right here, it even says SSID, 2.4 gigahertz. So this does not work with 5G Wi-Fi networks. I'm gonna type in exactly as it says here, eight foot ceilings. 
eight space, foot space, ceilings. I'm just gonna leave this STA. If you have an open Wi-Fi network with no password, you would just click this open right here, but we have a WPA2 PSK password. It's a mix of letters and numbers, or it's all letters. Yours probably is this if you didn't set it up yourself. If somebody set it up for you, you more than likely are WPA2 PSK or WPA PSK. Our Wi-Fi password is year of the ox. Come hack me, bro. All lowercase, you need to make sure this is exactly correct as well. If you have WEP encryption passwords, then you would use WEP. You probably don't have WEP because that's kind of really old. More than likely you have this on this setting, on that setting. If you're not sure about this, maybe reach out to FreeX or somebody else in your family or friends that is a little bit more tech savvy and ask them, hey, can you help me get into my router, which is usually 192.168.1.1, and then you log in and you can see some things about your Wi-Fi security, but more than likely you're gonna get working on these settings. So we're gonna hit set. And your printer should print out some information on a label with the SSID and the password. You can ignore that piece of paper. We're going to hit acknowledge and proceed. And then we're gonna to go to this ethernet tab right here. You're gonna to wanna to make sure it's on DHCP and you're gonna to wanna to make sure this DHCP is set to enable. And then you're going to hit set. And then it says printer restart required. Please wait five seconds and restart the FreeX thermal printer. So we're gonna turn it off physically by hitting the power switch in the back, and then we're going to turn it back on. It's going to spit out a piece of paper, and after the restart, IP address will be automatically configured with your router under a minute or two. Once it's configured, it will beep and print out a label with the configured IP address. Mine didn't beep, but it did spit out a IP address, and we're gonna be using this when we install the printer. So we're gonna hit acknowledge, then we're going to X out of this, and then we're going to go to this finder. We're gonna type in printer and try to get to printers and scanners, system preference, double click on that. And then we're going to hit this plus sign right here. And you're gonna see a bunch of printers here, but we're not gonna be installing it like this. We're gonna to go to IP, and then where it says address right here, you're going to take the IP address from the second printout, and mine is 192.168.1.251. Make sure this protocol dropdown is HP Jet Direct Socket, and then you're gonna wanna name this Wireless FreeX. So you know which printer is wireless because we installed a USB one earlier. And then where it says use, we're gonna click on that. We're gonna to go to select software, type in free, and then the free X driver is what we're gonna use. We're gonna hit okay. And then we're going to hit add. Um, mine says it already exists, probably because I installed it earlier. And we're just going to hit continue. And then we're gonna get a test print. I will put a link to this in the description. Hit download, open up this page, go to print. Make sure you pick the drop down. You can go to see more. Pick the wireless free X that we installed. And 100 by 150 is 4 by 6. Or you can pick 4 by 6 inches. And then you're going to hit print. It's going to send the signal to the printer. Now it's sending the signal through Wi Fi to the printer. It's going to take some time. The printer should receive the signal process the document and print it out. It might take you 10, 15 seconds. That's why I keep talking, but eventually it will print. And then we have a beautiful sample label. That is how you set up the FreeX Wi-Fi thermal printer on Mac. And before you click out of the video, I do recommend watching another video where I show how to change settings on like eBay, Amazon, Etsy, Poshmark because you need those printer settings to be in four by six if you're gonna be using this printer. They default to eight and a half by 11. 
you need to change those settings. Otherwise you're gonna be frustrated and make sure to check out that video. Link to it's in the description. Now we're gonna set this up on a Windows. Now we're gonna install this printer on a Windows computer and before we do, just make sure don't plug the printer into the computer yet. Sometimes Windows computers can be kind of weird when you plug printers in at the wrong time. It can auto install the wrong driver and then it's kind of a little bit more complicated to install because you have to uninstall it and it just can give people problems. So I'll tell you when to plug the printer in. We're gonna install it USB first and then we're gonna program the printer to our Wi-Fi network and then we're gonna unplug the USB and then we're going to install it via Wi-Fi. I will see you guys on the computer. So here we are on our Windows computer. You're going to need to download this thermal printer driver. We're going to click here to download the software. There is a link to this in the description of the video. So you're going to click on this Windows FreeX driver and then if we go to three dots here to more actions, we're going to hit download and it should download this file. It's a little folder right here. You can click on it here or you might have to navigate to your downloads folder depending on your computer and what browser you're using. Here's the Windows FreeX driver toolbox. We're going to double click on that. Then it's gonna bring you here. This FreeX Wi-Fi thermal printer driver install is what we're going to double click on. You're going to hit run and then it's gonna pop up with this. Do you wanna allow this app to make changes to your device? You're not gonna see it on the screen share. It's just gonna be black. I don't know why it doesn't record it. You're gonna hit yes. Set up language, English, okay. Then we're gonna hit install. Would you like to install the software? We're gonna hit install. And then it says printer installed. I'm going to hit finish. Now I'm going to take the printer and plug it into the computer. You should hear a little tone. And then I'm gonna go down here to this magnifying glass and type in printers and scanners and it should pop up with this printers and scanner system settings. I'm gonna click on it. If you look into your printers and scanners, you should see the free X Wi-Fi thermal printer. You can hit manage. You can send a test print directly to your printer. I'm just going to send a test page just to see if it has communication. And there you go. We have communication with Windows. If you go to printing preferences, it's gonna come up with all of your settings. These are the paper settings, all the dimensions. You can create a custom setting if you want through this manage button. There are settings for the print speed. If you wanna change the print speed, if you're gonna be using continuous labels, you're probably not gonna be using any of this, just label with gap. So this is where you get to settings in case you need settings. But we're going to print a test label. I'm gonna to go to fulfilledmerchant.com. I will put a link to this in the description. And this is just to show you that it is printing correctly in four by six. We're gonna hit download. Here is the label. We're gonna go here to the print icon, hit print. And then on this destination, you're gonna hit the drop down, and you should see free X if you don't go to see more and then look for the free X printer. There we go. If you go to more settings, paper size, you're, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that it is in 100 by 150 millimeters because that's equivalent of four by six inches. And for some reason, I don't see four by six inches on here. There's a four by six and a half inches, but we want it to be four by six. So that's 100 by 150 millimeters. And then we're going to hit print. It's gonna send the signal to the printer. Printer is going to print. And we have our beautiful sample label. It's a little bit fuzzier than it was on the Mac, so I'm going to change the dithering. And the way that I do that is in printer and scanners that I showed you before, we're gonna go to free X Wi-Fi thermal printer, manage printing preferences, and then half tone, we're gonna go to none, and we're gonna hit okay. See if that looks a little bit better, because I have a feeling that it will look a little bit better. There we go. It's hard to tell on the camera, but the one with the dithering turned off, the updated setting actually does look a little bit better. There is a little bit of fuzziness, um, the default settings. So I would recommend changing it to those settings that we just did if needed. Now that we set the printer up on our USB, we're going to set it up via Wi-Fi. We need to leave it plugged in because we need to program our Wi-Fi settings to the printer.
You remember that folder that we installed the printer on? Well, now we're going to go to this FreeX Wi-Fi printer tool right here. Double click on the printer tool, open that folder, and then click on this Wi-Fi thermal printer tool application. We're going to double click on that. I'm going to go to extract all, extract, and then in this folder, double click on that, double click on that folder, and then here we have the FreeX Wi-Fi thermal printer tool. You're going to double click on that. It's going to come up with a prompt. You go to more info, run anyways, and then it pops up with this printer tool. So what this does is it connects to the printer using the USB, and then we can program it for our Wi-Fi. So we have our printer right here. If you don't see yours, try turning your printer on and off, opening and closing the software. Your printer has to be on and plugged in before you open the software is what I've noticed. And then once you see your printer here, go to free X setup. Here is where we're going to program the printer with our Wi-Fi network. So how do you know your Wi-Fi network? You go down here, you open that, and then we're connected to eight foot ceilings 5G. However, this printer, you can only connect to 2.4 gigahertz Wi-Fi signals. That's says eight foot ceilings, not the 5G. You might have a dual band router. If you do, you're gonna wanna pick your non 5G network. If you only have a one band router, you're only gonna pick that network. It probably is 2.4 gigahertz. We need to type in the name of our SSID, which is the name of the network. And mine is eight space foot space ceilings and you want to make sure it's case sensitive everything is spelled perfectly if you don't have a wi-fi password you're going to hit open here if you do have a wi-fi password most likely it's going to be this wpa psk and you're just going to type in your wi-fi password ours is year of the ox you want to make sure it's uppercase lowercase all the numbers everything is correct then we're going to hit set but if you have wep you're going to use wep and if you don't know your Wi-Fi encryption, try it with these settings and then maybe reach out to somebody that knows tech in your family or a friend and ask them to help you get into your router and see the settings if you really are having trouble with this. Maybe even reach out to the company because it could slightly be different depending on your network security, but these are the most common settings right here. So we're gonna hit set. It sent a signal to my printer with some information, printed this out. It's gonna print out a label with an IP, SSID, and password. The SSID is your Wi-Fi name and the password is your password. You're gonna make sure that those are indeed correct. And then you're going to hit okay. And then we're gonna go over here to the ethernet tab. We're gonna click on that, make sure it's DHCP and DHCP is enabled. We're going to hit set. And then the printer should print out a, another label with an IP on it. This is the IP that we're going to use, but we're also going to follow these steps. Please wait five seconds and restart the free X. So we're physically gonna reach behind the printer, turn it off, wait five seconds, and then we're going to turn it back on. It says after the restart, the IP address will be configured under a minute or two. When I turn the printer back on, it prints out a blank label, and then it took about 15 seconds or so to print out another label with a Wi-Fi configure page. This is the page that we're going to be using when we install the printer. Uh, it says the printer will beep and print out a label, but ours didn't beep, it just printed it out. And it says write down the IP address, you will need to connect it, you will need it to connect wirelessly from other devices. I'm not gonna write it down, I'm just gonna use it straight from the label and then I'm gonna hit okay. We can now X out of here. And we're gonna go down here and type in printer and scanners again. You're gonna go to add a printer or scanner and then you're going to go the printer that I want isn't listed. From here, you're going to go add a printer using TCP slash IP address or host name, go to next. And then from here, the IP that printed out on the last label, 192.168.1.251 is mine. Yours may or may not be the same. So just put the number in on the label that printed out. Then you're gonna hit next.
make sure to check this little bubble custom. It says your device was not bound. I'm just going to hit next. Okay, so now it's asking me to install the printer driver. So we're going to go to FreeX Wi-Fi, FreeX Wi-Fi thermal printer, and we're going to hit next. Use the driver that is currently installed or replace the current driver. We're going to replace the current driver with that Wi-Fi thermal printer. And we're going to name this one Wi-Fi FreeX because the even though we installed the other one via USB, it's still called FreeX Wi-Fi, and I don't want them to get confused. So you want to maybe you want to name it something different, like Wireless FreeX Thermal, so you don't get it confused with the USB one. We don't need to share the printer because if you wanted to install it on another computer, you could just install it on those computers just like this, and then we're going to hit finish. I probably should have printed a test page when it said to print a test page, but I'm just going to do one from here. I'm going to click on it. I'm going to go to manage. I'm going to send a test print to the printer. It might take some time because it's going through space and getting processed by the printer. But once the printer does receive the signal, it should be able to print your test page like that. If you go to printing preferences, this is where you get all your settings like you saw on the USB. We're gonna set half tone to none to get better, crisper barcode, and then we're gonna hit okay. If you need to change any other settings, it's like that. And then we're going to go back to our sample label. There is a link to this in the description. And then we're going to hit command P. Make sure your destination is picked. Even though it says FreeX Wi-Fi Thermal Printer, we installed it USB, and that's, that USB printer is actually called this. So we want to now pick the wireless printer. They come up as two different printers because it's from two different types of drivers. We named it Wireless FreeX Thermal. We're going to pick that printer, and I unplugged it from the computer. There's nothing plugged in. You want to make sure your paper size is 4 by 6 which isn't on here, but four by six is also 100 by 150 because we're printing a shipping label. If you're printing something other than a shipping label, then you're gonna to wanna to pick your dimensions or make a custom dimensions in the settings that I showed you earlier today. You always want this paper size to match what your document size is, to match what's actually in the printer, and then you're going to hit print. Take some time to send the printer job through your network and be received by the printer and then processed by the printer but it should print it out within about 10 to 15 seconds. There we go. We got our beautiful sample label. You can stick this on packages, send them in the mail, but not this one because this one's not real. Uh, before you go, I do recommend you check out this video, uh, how to change four x six format on like eBay, Amazon, Etsy, Poshmark. You need to change those settings in the platform before you just start trying to print because you're going to try to print eight and a half by 11 documents. You need to change them to four by six. So make sure to check out that video. It's going to save you some frustration. Link to it's in the description. It says, watch this video. It'll just help you out a lot. That is the tutorial. I know it was long. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you haven't already, please give the video a thumbs up. And if you aren't already subscribed to the channel, consider subscribing. If you have any questions or troubleshooting, throw them in the comments. I hope FreeX actually checks the comments and maybe helps people out that are having trouble that way. Thanks again, and I'll talk to you in the next video. Bye.